to Freedom Live. We are Carenza and Brandon. Howdy. <laughs> and we help future nomads smoothly transition to full-time RVing. Yep. We're also the host of the RV to Freedom group and the creators of the Roadmap to Full-Time RVing course that helps future nomads get on the road. <laughs> so we recently had a anniversary which is an anniversary for when you hit the road as a nomad. Yeah. And that marks four years for us, like a couple months ago. And when we have it, it always helps us reflect back on the changes that we've experienced since we've been on the Think road. Think about how, how different we are than we used to be. And there's always a lot of that. You know, maybe you're wondering if you're going to be different after you've been on the road a while. The answer's probably yes. <laughs> But we wanted to talk a little more about that, but we thought we'd bring in some other people to talk about the changes they've experienced, too. So we brought on our friends, Kyle and Olivia from Driving and Vibing. Hi, Kyle and Olivia. So Hi, guys. welcome, guys. Thanks for having us today. Good. Thanks for joining us. We're so excited to have you guys on. I, I know there are a lot of people watching who are excited to have you on, too. We've had some comments that everybody's looking forward to hearing from you. So we're excited about that. Woo! And we thought we'd get a little intro about you guys and how you got started RVing. And tell us a little bit about yourselves. So we have been on the road for two and a half years. Um, we began this journey in our 16-foot fiber stream camper, which we are in right now. Mm -hmm. And really, the reason why we started in this was because we had a Ford Ranger. We didn't want to go into debt, so we had to work with what we had. Mm -hmm. And that led us to yeah. this kind of small house, uh, small camper living. We just started looking for trailers that we could tow with the truck we had because we were familiar with it. It was in great working condition. And we ended up stumbling upon this cute little 1985 molded fiberglass trailer. And it was just adorable and had a lot of character. And it really spoke to us. And it really helped us get out there on the road and pursue this dream and start this journey. And so you're going to planning on keep going, right? And there's no end in sight at this point. Yeah, no, I would say no end at all right now. You know, we definitely, uh, while we are full-time RVers right now, I wouldn't necessarily define myself as a full-time RVer, but this facilitates us to live life yeah. to the maximum right now. I think we're like just adventurers at heart, you know? And so whatever way that happens to come to fruition, you know, this is like how we're adventuring and traveling right now. But we try not to like set ourselves up for too many like concrete ideas in the future. And we just like to let it evolve and change naturally so whatever our passion or our creativity is pulling us to do we're open to following that great nice yeah that's totally so oh, you're just... about two and a half years <laughs> in and uh we just saw you guys over in quartzite but you booked it all the way back to alabama and oh. um so so what are you up to what are you what are you doing out there so um, around Christmas, we ended up buying a 79 uh, Airstream Argosy that we're going to renovate. So we decided it was time for a little bit bigger space, but we still like um, being small. So we have a little bit more flexibility and freedom and where we can camp. And we just feel more comfortable towing a smaller trailer. So we got a 24 foot trailer. It is completely gutted right now. We bought it with no floors, nothing. It was just the shell. And everyone was like, uh, that sounds a little crazy and ambitious. And we're like, well, you know, it's something that like we feel, um, you know, excited to learn about and do. And it's a great way for us to make our dream rig basically without going into debt. And we can kind of put the money into it as we have it. We can learn all these new skills and we can customize it exactly the way we want to exactly the right amount of storage and what kind of different little facets and things that we wish had in this rig now that we've been on the road for a while and we know what we want but there is a compromise for sure because with this project we have to be stationary yeah. if we really want to plow through it mm -hmm. which we want to do we don't want to dilly dally you know mm -hmm. we want to work hard and get this project done but that means we'll be in our hometown for like nine to ten months but we have set up time for ourselves to go on excursions mm -hmm. so we don't feel too trapped. Yes, definitely. We're going to be in this RV Nomads movie. So we get to take a little break and go film for that. And we're going to have the premiere in October too. So we have like some of those things on our horizon. And we've been talking about even recently planning some little vacations for ourselves <laughs> yeah. to get out on the road and just kind of 
kind of fall back into what we feel is our normal life again. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. It's interesting that you're about two and a half years in and you're you're trading up RVs because we were right around our two year mark when we decided we needed a different RV too. Because you know, you get out there and you figure out what this thing's really about, and then you realize everything you thought you knew, maybe it was right at the time, but it's different now. And you guys are moving up, we moved down, <laughs> and eventually so we're in a thirty foot, we went from a forty to a thirty. And I guess eventually we'll meet in the middle somewhere. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. yeah. I would not want to move down any farther than ours. You know, we're oh, 16. No. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. You started at one extreme. We started at the other extreme and we're just kind of, you know, finding that happy, happy yeah. spot in the middle somewhere. Because yep. eventually I could see us going down a lot as well. Yeah. I mean, we could go smaller now that we're even doing this, but it's one of those things you get out there and you figure it out. Like we, when we started looking, it it, it, things were kind of closing in on us, you know, as we started looking, we heard, we heard people talking about, oh, you need it, you need it bigger and everything. So, but then once we were out here and we're doing it and we're yeah. like, yeah, we don't need this much space. This is crazy. And the other thing too, is I was just talking to someone that's like, well, don't you feel like you need more space as a full-timer? It's like, well, do you want to carry around more space everywhere you go? Like, do you really need that extra 10 feet? That's 10 more feet that you've got to get down the highway, get through a gas station, you know, Trade get everywhere. Things. So you got to just kind of decide what your priorities are, I think. And exactly. exactly. One of the biggest lessons or one of the biggest things we've learned since hitting the road in a 16 foot camper is that we've been so fortunate as far as not having to deal with breakdowns, not having to deal with oh, mechanical yeah. issues. We have so many friends who have issues every month. Mm -hmm. And yes, we are in a tiny rig that only has a king size bed, a kitchen and a bathroom. But we've been so fortunate to not have to deal with those issues. Yeah, and the things that we do replace or fix are very, very inexpensive. Mm -hmm. We can yeah. buy like four brand new tires for our rig for the cost of one of most people's Not even, tires. yeah. I mean, if you buy all new Class A tires, that's the whole cost of our rig almost, you know? <laughs> yeah. And you've got a king-size bed. That's what most <laughs> people's list is. It must yeah. have a king-size bed. Well, buy a fiber stream. Well, I didn't mean like that. <laughs> Yeah. We, I mean, we completely live out of our bed, and that is one of the reasons yeah. why we wanted a smaller yeah. upgrade. We need that working space. Yeah. We're coming to you live from our bed yes. this very moment. <laughs> <laughs> like, nice. I love having a desk, an area where I can like have people over and come sit that isn't like, well, we can either stand outside or you can come sit on my bed. These mm -hmm. are our options because <laughs> our dinette and bed are kind of a conversion sort of thing. But once you make this thing comfortable enough to sleep on and you put your mattress topper on there, it's just, it's never going back into the dinette. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. It's just easier to sit on top of it. <laughs> You're not doing that. And is that one of the reasons you decided to get a new one too? A little bit, lay out a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I want a, like a separate living space. That is a big thing for me is because I don't even, you know, mind the the space of the rig that much because we do get outside and we adventure and we don't spend all day inside of here, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, we sleep in here and we, you know, make breakfast and stuff, but that's about it. But I just really like the idea of having like that little bit of separation, even though it's not much bigger, you know, it'll, it'll feel huge to us, but it's still a tiny trailer, but mm -hmm. I think it'll be nice to have like those different areas where we can just separate and go work and do our own thing sort of and the dog's gonna love it i'm sure yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> no, we we enjoy that that's one of the things we like about ours because sometimes you know one of us just wants to get away go lay in the bed or something and watch tv and the other one's working or you know somebody's sick it's nice not to be right on top of each other if someone's sick fortunately in rv life we don't get sick too often but it yeah. happens true we only get sick when we hang out with our family. Yeah, the holidays. <laughs> exactly. Right. One time a year, and it's when we go hang out with a bunch of other people. Yep. Yes, yep. that's exactly. Yes, that's I, have to, exactly I have to get on a plane, happens. and then I'm like, okay, I'm getting sick. Yeah. <laughs> so those are those are kind of the some of your, I guess, physical changes, changing from the RV, you know, one RV to another. But what are some of the um, personal changes? So I know we had mentioned something about living with less and a lot of it's like, we don't shop. I know you guys wanted to get kind of remove the clutter when you started and everything like, like that, you know, just not having so much stuff. 
but it was also less stress too. Oh, I, yeah. I, I think our whole, this whole lifestyle just was overall just much more peaceful, less stressful than the jobs and lives that we were living before we hit the road. But um, a part of like all of that peace and stuff too was just like all this extra time we had. We were like, what do we do with like all of this extra time? Who am I now that I am not this person that like has filled this role for so long in one place? So that kind of evolution of figuring out like who we are now was kind of like stressful in some ways. Like for me personally, mm -hmm. I think I was like trying to figure out like really like who I was and dealing with just like all of this stress that I had never um, actually put attention to before because I had so many distractions going around um, around me that I could be like, I'll deal with that later. But so like getting on the road is like being, uh, you know, by myself for the first time in a long time. And so I got to like kind of make peace with all of these things that I didn't know I was holding on to. And that was like such a like wonderful process to me and like, like losing, letting go of the stuff that like had power. And I also say, uh, when we're on the road, no one has an expectation of us, at least in the beginning, you know, when no one knew who we were, especially. Mm -hmm. uh, when, Before we decided yeah. to put ourselves all over YouTube. We're, we were, we're <laughs> nobody. In, in every Walmart, in any gas station we go to, nobody knows us. We're nobody's son. We're nobody's friend. We're nobody's coworker. And that was a lot of uh, re stress relief. And I always yeah. find that whenever we come back to our hometown or something, we're always defined by these certain roles that we once had or that we still have. And we're just inside that bubble now. Yeah. And it was kind of nice to be anonymous and become the person like we always wanted to be, but you yeah. know, maybe yeah. for whatever right. reason right. didn't allow ourselves to. So you got, you got to turn into your best self. I feel like. Well, it's funny. I remember you guys from Anza Borrego two and a half years ago. You were the weirdos that showed up in that little <laughs> tiny trailer and, yeah. um, you're totally different now than you were, except oh you still God. got the little trailer. I, I feel like uh, we met so many people at that trip, and we knew nothing of what was going on. That was before we met up with Escapers you know. in Quartzlight, where no. we learned so many lessons. We didn't lessons. have a generator yet. Yeah. Like, we were not set up to boondock at all. We, we were, were like, freezing. Totally newbies, yes. so green, and, like, still kind of, like, shy and scared Very, yes. and, like, yeah. We're big introverts, so like we had a hard time kind of reaching out at first and getting comfortable. Um, you guys also kind of you showed up a little bit late, and like everybody had already been hanging out, and then it was like you came in. So yeah, I I totally get it. I have to admit, uh, we were starstruck by a solo journey. Oh yeah, <laughs> we were following her on Instagram for like the year before we hit the road, and she was there. Like we were total fanboys. Yes, that was really. Nice. That's awesome. We're going to take tag carry on this now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but that's, that's understandable. It's yeah. When you follow someone and get to meet them. And of course now I'm sure you get some of that <laughs> yourself. Starting but yeah. Channel, like created a whole other transformation for us. Yes. I, mean, I was so like shy. I had such horrible, like social anxiety. I could barely look people in the eye when I talked to them. That's just how I've always been. I've just been very, shy introverted person and it really like forced me to come out of my shell we created this amazing community full of people that are so supportive and like caring and it just really i feel like helped me find my voice a little bit better i can see that because i mean you guys are out there you're putting yourselves out on youtube you're getting you're comfortable talking you know to the camera and getting comfortable with people it's the same type of thing like we're doing here we're talking all the time live and yeah. now we're a lot more comfortable with it than when we started <laughs> and and when we say we say something about being introverts and people are like really you guys don't seem like it because we're doing this yeah. but really we truly are yeah. <laughs> two of us here you know yeah. we may be a lot of people but there's not a bunch of people looking at me in front of me so that was kind of fun like in court site me kind of getting over my nerves of talking to an actual group of real people <laughs> <laughs> and i have to say one of the other benefits of this community now online is that as introverts we never make the first move we're never ones to step out and say hey guys let's hang out 
So it has been so nice whenever people send us messages or people just stop by our campsite and they introduce themselves because then we get to make true friends that we would have never taken that first step. Oh, yeah. So many connections we've made. We've become so much more social since we've been on the road, (laughs) which I thought, I'm like, oh, we're going to just be loners, I guess, and maybe (laughs) meet someone occasionally, but we have so many friends now and we get to do so many more activities and things with people than we ever did when we were stationary. Yeah. Yeah, I, we absolutely agree. Same, yeah. same thing for us. I mean, it was, it, we're, we're kind of uh, quiet anyway, and would be a little bit of a homebody when we were living in our sticks and bricks places. And then I, I wasn't sure how much we were going to get out and meet people, but we were lucky enough to start meeting people and fall into like some groups right away because there were like some groups meeting up and I did. I actually tried to put myself out there. I'm not usually one to reach out, but I was like, okay, I, I, I have to do something. So like I saw some people were coming in town. I'm like, Hey, we're down here. If you guys want to meet up and it just like snowballed from there. And now we're way more social than we ever were. What's kind of funny is like, if you meet me at a convergence, I'm usually out there trying to do everything because I want to do everything. I want to have fun. But I'm a huge introvert, too. So, like, as soon as the convergence is over, I want to go away. But Krenza <laughs> is much more reserved than me. But she's the one that did all this initial reaching out. If it wasn't for her, like, it'd just be the two of us. We'd probably be back in an apartment somewhere, like, sick of this RV life thing, you know. But, you know, taking those steps to kind of break out a little bit and try to meet people that are similar, it, it makes it more fun. Yeah. Uh, it really took us joining Escapers for us to push out of our comfort zone and go to that first convergence in court site and just be like in the middle of a ton of people at once and you know making all those connections and it was a little you know scary at first because we're going into like this unknown group of people but it was so great and like just how quickly people connect when you rv because you don't have time for small talk and to waste that time so right off the bat you're like finding your common ground, your connection, and then you just vibe so quickly. And I love that. Yeah. Nice use of the word vibe there. <laughs> nice. Hashtag vibe. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, we're, we're the same way. And we're actually kind of preparing ourselves for the Moab convergence that we're about to roll into. Uh, Brandon's <laughs> throwing the hashtag. Oh, you can see, I see it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's, it's great because you have some kind of, an instant connection, an instant reason to talk to each other. And it makes it a lot easier to like get into conversations about stuff because you know that you have shared experiences and similar things rather than like just some random person you meet at a party. Like, so what do you do? Yeah. Like, like we don't, we don't even ask that anymore. Yeah. People it's, rarely like talk about jobs and money and work. Cause that's not what we do. We travel. No, yeah. we you know, talk we about work. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We talk right. about toilets and solar power <laughs> and generators and, you know, boondocking locations. But yeah. yeah, our job is not our who we are. We just do our job to fund what we want to do. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, I mean, that's one change right there. That's not the primary focus of everything, it's what do you do for a living? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they ask you because they see you're young and you're full time. Yeah. Then they ask. Well, they're like, well, how do you make money? You know? <laughs> and then you got to go off in the whole list of all the different things you do because, yeah, because there's we all end up hustling. That we just found, like, we're just experimenting basically yeah. over here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just noticed Kat said she has uh, watched me grow online. Aww. Thanks, Kat. <laughs> That's yeah, so definitely in social life, I have to say, is one of the biggest changes and the biggest surprise of RVing for yeah. us. And it, it seems like everybody we talk to, it's the same deal. Like, we're way more social now than we ever were. Or, you know, you find um, real strong extroverts that are worried about going on the road because they're not going to have anybody to talk to. And yeah. That doesn't happen. If you if you show up at a, at a meetup or a convergence or something and 
you know, grab some friends real quick and then stay in contact and just start meeting up with more people along the way. It makes it or easy. Or even your neighbor in the RV park is usually, you know, going to walk over and say hi. And we've connected yep. people that way. That but way. I would be interested uh, to know an extrovert's perspective because I feel like I'm always talking to introverts that are in the <laughs> RV park. Funny. To I've, see if it met their expectations yeah. or if they exceeded their expectations. Yeah. Maybe we'll Jen, are you on? Because if you were on, I know you can speak to this. Yeah, Jen Neely <laughs> is our resident extrovert. Yeah. Um, she's also, we call her like the social director. Social director, or, or she's kind of the glue because you almost yeah. need an extrovert to go and grab all the introverts and stick them yeah. together. Exactly. So, you know, and she's she's know. the one that's. Yeah, exactly. And take us I know, like. <laughs> I know for her that she, she is, she really loves our being, but she does want to be around people. So sometimes where, you know, we can go off and like be alone for a long time as we're traveling. She might not always meet up with people. That's harder for her. She, yeah. she likes to be, she traveled, we traveled with them for a few months last yeah. year. Ended up doing that. But then when we got boring and we were sitting inside working, they moved down into town yeah. so they could go to breweries <laughs> and go see stuff and do things. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. So, so uh, I'd like to touch on real quick, if that's all right. Uh, is as far as the social life goes, and one way we've changed is that uh, caravanning has been oh, yeah. has opened up as an opportunity. I never thought I'd be interested in caravanning, but uh, some of those uh, experiences have been really rewarding and fun. Yes, definitely. And I think our friends can a lot of times convince us to do things we yeah. wouldn't normally do, like for yeah. our <laughs> take us on off-roading trips where I'm like holding on for dear life like oh my god why do you do this for fun <laughs> in that big truck I'm guessing <laughs> yes we, I, I'm not gonna go off-roading with them again for a while <laughs> <laughs> well don't go with me because mine's a little faster and um, it feels less like a boat but it, it yeah don't go with me <laughs> it is fun though we we like the thrill of feeling like we might die you know yeah. occasionally like once a year yeah, we're once down. we forget about the, ex the first experience <laughs> it's always fun to go in someone else's truck too because you don't have to think about oh what's going to break that i'm going to have to fix that's uh, we're always down to go if it's in someone else's vehicle but we're like uh this tool's my house i don't know yeah yeah but you guys are going to have to get a bigger truck aren't you so, yeah. we, so we don't know what we're going to get yet, but something like a, a very big uh, Ford F-150 or something mm -hmm. like that. We had an opportunity to drive a Ford F-250 when our truck broke down a few months back, and it was just a little too big for us. So, And, and the Argosy is actually pretty light yeah. still. It's much lighter than most Airstreams, and it's a little bit narrower as well. So we don't need anything huge. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's nice that you don't have to worry about that. So what else we got to, um, let's see. Well, you talked a bit about getting comfortable in your own skin and, and we've, we all see that, you know, you can go, any of us, you can go back and look at our first video and then look at today and see like, okay. And it's with everybody. We like, you know, we're, we're friends with uh, the winds, Nikki and Jason. And it's funny, like they're so polished and so tight and their videos are so good. But you go back and look at one of their first ones and it's like, they're just like us. <laughs> and just work really hard all the time but you know that's what i tell people all the time you want a good laugh go watch our first video our first hundred videos yeah. even yeah yeah i mean, definitely i think um you even realize you get a little more comfortable in your skin you put yourself out there um you know it's it's for us i think we kind of even know who we are a little bit more mm -hmm. than we did when we started because it's it's different than than with the life we were living before, but you have a little bit more freedom to explore yourself and like, yeah. I mean, our life what you want to be. five years ago, Krenza worked in Manhattan. I commuted to the suburbs to work in a corporate office building, and I went to Fashion Week four times, and oh like God. had like weird like we had Crystal for New Year's one year, and that was just a that the whole time I never felt like I belonged. Yeah. Like that wasn't me. That was just my job. I would never have imagined. I always wonder, uh, are those people watching our YouTube videos ever? It's like a, <laughs> yeah. a different person now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now I'm just like, you know, this dirty guy that, you know, <laughs> lives in an RV and goes off roading and 
does what I want and I never wake up to an alarm clock if I don't have to. So that's, I like it better this way. Yeah. Living on like your own terms and your own timeline. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. But the YouTube thing did take a while. I don't even know if there's one thing I could pinpoint that helped us make that bridge from uncomfortable to comfortable. I just think it was a ton of videos that did it for us, you know? Yeah. Uh, other Otherwise, I, I can't specifically say what happened that made us feel better about it. Well, I think we were getting more confident in RV life, too. We, like, yeah. kind of were building more resources. We were more prepared to boon talk. We had better connection to stay connected on the internet. Like we were just starting to feel a little more confident in what we were doing and how we could share our experience to help others and having people, you know, give us feedback and say, oh my gosh, that was super helpful. I would have never thought of that. And it's like, we don't ever want to portray like that we know what we're doing about anything, but we're like, this is what we did, you know, for better or worse, yes. you could learn from this maybe. And we're glad there are experts in the community because uh, we are just uh, sharing our own deal. That yeah. We, we don't like giving people too much advice. Yeah. Just like our sharing our experience, yeah. I guess. And yeah, I think that seeing the country, I, I had never been out West before. I had never seen mountains. I'd never seen the desert. So my mind was just blown and it just opened up all these new, like, I don't know, windows and opportunities and creativity. And mm -hmm. I mean, we wrote this album inspired by our travels and it's just really just sparked all these exciting new ideas. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's great. I mean, there there's just so much out here that it really does kind of help your neurons start firing and things go on. We're we're more visual artists. Neither of us can carry a tune <laughs> or play an instrument. <laughs> so, but but yeah, the it's it's inspiring. I mean, we well, we both went to art school. We've, we've been in design and working on computers and stuff yeah. and and photography to a point. But when I got back out there, it's like I wanted to go get some pastels and actually paint and draw again and things like that you know it just really kind of brought that out more yeah that's what i've been thinking about like we need to get some canvas and some acrylics and yeah but i'll be you know i was the same way i mean we're from similar areas i grew up in georgia so pine trees everywhere <laughs> and houses that's what you get and yeah. so when we came out west it was just crazy because it was completely different and then you know we've met people that are from the west and they they're sick of it they want to go east you know you never want to go where you're from i guess right. you want to see something else but for you guys too i mean you you are um, musically inclined so yeah you created this album and it's it's like all about life on the road <laughs> that's pretty inspiring right there yeah i mean and it was pretty easy to write these songs too i mean yeah. we had such a wealth of memories and yeah. experiences to draw from that it basically wrote itself yeah, right. Nice. And you guys are in luck. They agreed to play live right now for us. <laughs> if I had my guitar, it's just kidding. Guitar. Yeah, I mean, you have it all the right there, yeah. right? It's all <laughs> right but there. They can find you. your album pretty easily, right? On your site? You know, driving and vibing, if you type it in anywhere online, yeah. you know, you can do it on Spotify, iTunes, Amazon Music, YouTube. You know, it's yeah. everywhere. So it's pretty easy to listen to for free. Yep. Nice. <laughs> So we did have a question here that kind of related to you were talking about filming stuff and and your channel and that, you you know, you're just sharing your journey. <laughs> you guys are kind of like Sherpas. You're taking people through your journey <laughs> and seeing maybe they learn from your experiences and everything. So someone asked if um, if you focus on what you think the channel wants to see or if you film for you and what you enjoy filming. All right. So first, a shout out to I'm Not Lost, I'm RVing, because I believe that's their YouTube channel. So they're YouTubers as well. And we watch it. So, uh, yeah, a shout out to them real quick. But all right. As far as the question goes, um, we focus now on both what the viewer wants to see and what we want to create. We're not going to do something that we don't want to do, I don't think. No. But uh, we also have learned after 400 videos what the viewer wants to see, you know, and we want to give them something that is, uh, you know, that they can uh, consume and enjoy it. Yeah, and we're constantly taking feedback and we ask people what they want to see more of or less of or 
you know, if they enjoyed a certain type of thing. So we are always going to be filming our daily lives, what we're doing. We don't ever like do anything that doesn't align with us or our passion or our beliefs and things like that. But we do um, constantly ask for feedback because that's how we've grown. That's how we've improved and really channeled um, and shaped our channel to what it is today. I think we probably didn't have any direction in the beginning and we tried a bunch of different things not all yeah. of them worked and you just kind of experiment and see what works along the way and as we've created so many videos now and we're doing five videos a week uh we've really created this uh just rhythm of the type of videos we're making mm -hmm. so you know when we're on the road it's free campsite videos it's exploring an area it's a Q&A every week. And mm -hmm. then we have like two other sp slots to fill, mm -hmm. which can be like a list or, you know, some informative. Yeah, or just like a vlog of what yeah. we did that day, where we went exploring, where we ate lunch, <laughs> just what there is to do around town. We try to make so it. If you guys are, if you're not traveling right now, um, as much you We're know gonna you're gonna have be a doing bunch some. of awesome build videos i'm sure yeah right? i guess build videos are those going to take place for some of your free camping that's spots? Exactly right yeah. yeah so instead of those campsites or national park videos we're going to try to do like you know at least two airstream videos a week mm -hmm. whether it's a, a preparation and planning video or it's the day we actually like lift the shell off or something yeah. like that so oh, and that's be kind of exciting i want to watch that <laughs> It is a little bit harder to create content while we're not moving all the time because there's so much to show <laughs> while we're moving around. So it yeah. is kind of weird on those days we aren't working on the trailer and we're like, so what do we do today? Like, what are we going to show people? Yeah, you know, and so we do have to incorporate a few more gear review videos while we're back here, you know. And But there's still things we, we like to do, but they're not like, it's not, we would rather do a free boondocking site than a gear review if it was our choice, but. Yeah, yeah. and we just have to get more comfortable doing more vloggy type yeah. style stuff. At the beginning, we were doing only informative videos. Like here is a three minute review of this campsite we stayed at. And now we're doing like 10 to 15 minute videos of just kind of us and what we did that day, celebrating Rivers Adoption mm -hmm. Day, you know, fun stuff like that. Nice. Yeah, so it's evolved just like you guys have evolved and everything else has changed. <laughs> Figure out what you want. This one, there's another question here that I'd bring up and asked if we both enjoy boondocking in the quartzite area. And since we were all just there at the annual bash, <laughs> we'll throw it to you guys, see what you think of quartzite. Yeah, so during the annual bash, we love boondocking at Quartzsite, mm -hmm. and we specifically love boondocking uh, up at that location we did this time just yeah. north of town. And I, I love it for the social aspect. The Quartzsite, the town itself, isn't much of anything. I wouldn't go there any other time of the year. I only go there because I want to see all the people that I know are going to be in this one area at the same time. We didn't go to the big tent while we were in town. No. We didn't go to the you know flea market. We do not care about Quartzsite anymore, but we love the people that show up there. Yeah. yeah that's what we've told people about Quartzsite is yeah. don't expect the town to entertain you. <laughs> you know, people go to meet up with friends. The RV show and all that is just some junk that they put out there right. to try to get money out of people. And worst is when people say, oh, we're going to swing by Quartzsite and see what it's all about, you know, this month. I'm like, no, you can't go this month. You have to go during a yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. span of time. Yeah, yeah and you can't go, go at just... a certain time. Yeah, if you don't just... go in the summer. Exactly. <laughs> and if you go just to see the tent, you're missing Quartzsite. Exactly. Because Quartzsite is all that land around. For us... And we, we went to the big tent. Well, actually, we've been to the big tent twice now. But we went this year, but it was literally just because we were there that day we were gonna roll out to go to agm and we we're like let's go film a little bit of it because we wanted to put together just as quick like a short little video on quartzite so because we had so many questions about what is it like what what is this place because people are like oh that sounds horrible or that sounds awesome so we um you know we went there really just for that yeah. and we've uh, been there a few times I had more but, more fun pulling people out of the yeah. gravel in the parking lot <laughs> than going through the tent. But, yeah, we ran through it really because yeah. we weren't we didn't need to buy anything or anything. But like we're the that. same way. It's it's about it's, yeah. the groups that meet up there. Go hang out with one of the groups. We were all with escapers, which is huge. But mm -hmm. RTR was ginormous there. Yeah. 
um, and every brand has a club out there meeting yeah. up. And, and since we know it's in that, like it's a good meeting point just in general, we met up with friends there for New Year's mm -hmm. because it was easy from where everybody was coming from. And so we liked that area and we were down near Kofa Wildlife at that point. Yeah. So if you really like Kofa is nice because it's south of town yeah. and it's quieter and it's more remote. And so that was it's nice. more washboardy than where we were. That was felt like luxury boondocking right there with the paved road that yeah. wasn't broken up. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. That AGM or American Girl Mine is a great place to boondock, uh, whether it is the time of year or not. We, uh, except the summer, but I mean, any time in the winter, we yeah. really enjoy that because we do like Lima. It, it's a city that's grown on us. You know, it's not that it provides anything amazing, but it's a great accessibility to American Girl, and we just really enjoyed our time there. Yeah, when Crimson went out of town um, for Thanksgiving. She flew out from Phoenix and I took the RV down to American Girl so I could just sit there by myself. And there's the best sunsets there and just yeah. sit there every day at five o'clock. I'd go outside and sit in my chair and watch the sunset. And then I go back in and watch TV. Um, it's amazing out there, too. It is blazing fast. Yeah. So, um, you want to. Which one? Oh, well, I've got we've a few oh, questions. Take, take coming Maureen's in. question there. <laughs> so we. We talked a little bit, I talked a little bit about how we all have these weird hustles where we make money a bunch of different ways. So someone wants to know, how do you make money or do you get paid for what you're doing? And, you know, I know it's a loaded question, but have fun with it. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Yeah. So we can check off you can the list. with our YouTube videos. We can make money from AdSense, which means the advertisements that they place at the beginning or throughout the video. Mm -hmm. Um, on the YouTube channel and our blog, we could also make money from uh, brand deals, sponsorships, stuff like that. That doesn't happen very often, yeah. but it is an option that sometimes happens. And also through affiliate links through our blog or channel through Amazon, we're Amazon affiliates. So we make some money doing that as well. We make a little money from our album. We make a little money from t-shirts. <laughs> um, we're affiliates with a few other um, different companies. Yeah. What else do we have? You pretty, yeah, pretty much you knocked all of them out. Oh, so right now while we're in our hometown, I'm also playing music. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's one thing I haven't even told Olivia this yet, but uh, <laughs> whenever we hit the road again, uh, it, whenever we hit the road again full time when we get done with the Airstream, I wouldn't mind bringing the gear on the road and playing a few mm -hmm. gigs every now and again because I do, I do like playing music a lot. I mm -hmm. singing is one of my favorite things to do, and and playing the guitar facilitates that. But uh, during the first year or two on the road, I, I was so burnt out. We I was playing two hundred gigs a year prior, so I didn't know to play any music. But but we thought we were going to have to support yeah. ourselves. That was our plan when we hit the road to make money is to play gigs. I was learning how to play the drum. And I was just like so nervous because as I told you at the beginning, I was hardcore introvert, terrified of being in front of people. So it was creating a lot of stress for me, anticipating that going into this lifestyle, doing something I'm not comfortable with or prepared to do. Um, but then our Etsy shop um, really, it turned into something that was sustainable enough and bringing in enough income that we could live off of that on the road. And it kind of gave Kyle a break to because he had been playing music full time for years. And so he was able to kind of have a renewed sense of creativity and have a little downtime where he had to be on all the time and always performing because that does take a lot of energy. So, yeah. yeah. So, and then I guess we should say that for the first two years on the road, we were making a lot of our money from Etsy, selling mm -hmm. antique maps and prints. That was very strong in the beginning, and it has teetered off from there till now. We recently sold the entire shop to somebody, and uh, so that was a source of income. Mm -hmm. But now it's all so in yeah. a social media bubble. Yeah, we just didn't really have the time and energy to invest in it anymore, and it it didn't have the um, ability to grow um, as much as we would have wanted it to. So we are investing that energy into ourselves, and you know, some of these other avenues. Um, and just seeing how, where that takes us and where that branches off, because I feel like we have the opportunity to just follow our creativity and try a lot of different yeah. things we want to. Well, I think a, a good, a big positive for you guys is you had a very low cost of living. Um, having a pay, I'm, 
your truck you you had, you know, your trailer was inexpensive. You didn't go and take out loans on a giant RV and, you know, have big insurance bills and all of that stuff to to cover all that and that stuff. So it helps, you know, you can gives you flexibility when you're yeah. starting out. And to us, that was like what freedom was all about, you know, as far as RV to freedom goes, it's mm -hmm. like freedom is uh, to not, uh, you know, have to make those payments. So if we don't, for us, yeah, for us, yeah, exactly. It's totally we different for everybody. Just in a place where um, we wanted to have such little living expenses that we wouldn't have that stress and we didn't have any payments that we had to meet every month. So we didn't have to have a super conventional job. We had some flexibility and wiggle room. So depending on you know, how much we ate out or how much we, um, you know, boondocked or, you know, managed our grocery budget, we could save a ton of money and, you know, put it in different areas where we needed it. Sorry. <laughs> Brandon had it muted there for a second. No, I think that, I mean, it was very smart for you guys to be able to start out like that. And I thought your Etsy shop was very smart too, because everything's so flat. You can yeah. just you know, carry it around. And I saw that you were looking to, to sell it, but I didn't know that that had happened. So it's it's pretty interesting too. You've been able to now like move on from that and you get to be creative in your own ways and have all your little streams with your music and your social media and all of this. And congratulations on like being able to sustain, sustain yourselves that yeah. way. Thank you. <laughs> that's kind of our goal is like, once we lose passion for something, we don't want to feel tied to that in any way. If it starts to feel more like a burden and draining yes. to us, then we don't want to do it anymore. We want to find the next thing that excites us and drives us. And that's been one of the other big lessons that we've taken away in our being and in our life in general is that that, that which frees us at some point eventually imprisons us if we or hold, can. yeah, or can imprison us if we hold too tightly to it. So it is important for us to let things go once they've served their purpose and we're no longer inspired by it. And have that just flexibility. We didn't even really and still haven't put um, a time limit. You know, everybody wants to know when we're going to be done with this or how right. long we're going to do this. And it's like, until I wake up one day and I don't want to do it anymore. That's my right. point. Yeah. <laughs> I'm you know, right there with you. <laughs> we have days when we wake up and it's just, we're not feeling it, but what we enjoy about RVing so far is that we can change it. Like I was getting sick of boondocking. I was getting sick of not having a nice long shower. So we stay in a park for a few days. Now I'm yep. sick of parks. I'm ready to go back boondocking, <laughs> yeah. you know? And so, but we can, we can go West. We can go to Canada. We can go to Mexico. Yeah. You know, we can we park can the sit, RV yeah. and fly away. We can go right. sit at her mom's. We for can months sit and stay for a while. If we, if we get, if we're traveling too much, we can stop. Yeah. And, that, and just stay for a while. That's just the most amazing thing about the RV life for, mm -hmm. for us, I think, is that we don't even know where we're going to go next sometimes. Mm -hmm. And to yeah. be able to be that free uh, is is just something, a different experience that I think most mm -hmm. people don't feel a lot of times. Yeah. And like yeah. you said, sometimes you're not like to waking up and totally feeling it. And you're no like, doubt. I want a shower. I feel dirty and I'm hot and I want the AC running full blast and mm -hmm. I want to go soak in hot tubs. So, you know what? We go do that. And we take ourselves to where that is. And then we say, God, I want to get away from these hot tubs. I'm There's so too many people here. Yes. <laughs> That's exactly my life right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it's very true. Yeah, we just change it up. Yeah. And it's, it's weird. We already got the like itch. I needed to move. And it was like two weeks. And I'm like, Ah, I gotta move, I gotta yeah. move. But then so, we came yeah. to the park, and this is a beautiful park. Nothing against this park at all, or parks in general. But we've been here for two days, and I'm I'm ready to go. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I had my shower. But we, you know, it's fine. Changing in RVing. Whenever we started, we would stay in one place for 24 hours to like okay. three days max, yep. and that was for like the first year almost. And then we've changed and slowed down, but. Have, did you guys have a similar experience as far as the speed of which you travel change over time? Well, when we started, I had read a bunch of um, not so many blogs, but more like messenger boards mm -hmm. that if we stayed for a month at a time, it would be cheaper. So we had this plan. We were going to go a month at a time. Well, we also place. knew people. We had read that people burnt out going quickly. Yeah, because they so, went too fast. So we're they, like, we'll just do slow. So we did slow and then we were doing it too slow. We got stuck in Savannah. Yeah in like april or may or something and the ac is running 24 hours a day 
Um, and it was just, no, it was June. Yeah. Well, yeah, well it was, it was North Carolina. It was Savannah. June. Yeah. We yeah. stayed longer cause we were around family and, and then I had to fly out. So we ended up with an extended stay there. And then we went to North Carolina and the monthly rate was so cheap. We were just like, we'll stay a month. And it was July at that, yeah. by the end of that. And we were like, what are we doing? Yeah. Coastal so North Carolina more. too. So yeah, then we just booked <laughs> it to Burlington, Vermont. And that was awesome. And then from there, I think we, we kind of fell into a rhythm. Two weeks is about our sweet spot, but actually two weeks is starting to feel a little long to us sometimes, but we flex, we, we flex a lot. Like, um, you know, we'll be doing a week stop at a time. Week is pretty good for us. But then sometimes I'm just like, I'm tired of moving, you know, let's just sit down for a while. So we'll do a month somewhere and then we'll be sick of sitting still and so we'll start moving again. Yeah, I think that's pretty much exactly how we travel now. Yeah. A week is good at a boondocking site, but if we like a town, you know, we'll just hop over to another site in the same area. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we yeah like that's to... the good thing is, yeah, we short jumps. Yeah. The short jumps. Yeah, definitely the short, short runs, not the five hour drive we're doing tomorrow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Got to get to Moab. Yeah. <laughs> One day. <laughs> but yeah, the short jumps and. Two weeks is a nice time because it gives you a full weekend, you know, mm-hmm. so if there's, you know, because everybody else is working for the weekend. So if there's activities on the weekend, you you can at least go out and see them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And depending on like what's nearby, to you, I feel like my enjoyment of a place can depend a lot on how nice or close the grocery stores are. To me. <laughs> if yeah. there's a hiking or walking trail in town, mm-hmm. that's a big one for us. That's yeah. something that's changed a lot since we've been on the road too, is just like our activity oh, yeah. routines and getting on a good like exercise schedule, whether that's a walk around the town or city to explore, going on a great hike. Kyle started running every single day. So it's just like inspired us to get out and go see something. But yeah. with, I have to say, I got into an awful pattern of doing no physical activity for like three months because it might have been uh, rainy or we would have made it. I can't remember what the deal was, but that's what inspired me to get out and be like, I have to run every day <laughs> because I'm like uh, gaining weight on the road and I should be, act- I should be exercising. I should be out hiking. What's going on? Yeah. Right. Well, it's funny. Cause you, you mentioned like your proximity to a good store is, is helps you. And, and then you went off into this really nice, healthy spiel about, exercise and when you first said that i was like my proximity to pizza is important (laughs) because the last place we were at we drove 30 minutes to get pizza and it was not good and so Uh we had to leave you know and when we got here we went out and got pizza all right so so let me tell you uh our the best pizza we have ever had is in hot springs arkansas at deluca's yep if you are ever best we've ever had so really? you're gonna have to remember that. You have to Boy, write Brandon's that down. I got the pen and the paper right here. <laughs> the Lucas Hot Spring, yep. Arkansas, better than whether it's sticks and bricks life or traveling, the best. Mm-hmm. And number two pizza was in Silverton. Silverton, Colorado. Oh yeah. yeah. That brewing company, the yeah. Mountain. Oh okay, because I was like trying to think of what what pizza is in Silverton. <laughs> we were taken aback by it. We were surprised mm-hmm. that it was so good. No, we love wow. it. We love to indulge too. It's it's all about the balance and yeah. trying to like not feel horrible. Yes. Like after we enjoy this giant pizza, eat one a piece. Yes. Like I will right. eat a large to myself. He will eat a large to him. Yeah. <laughs> well, every every pizza is a personal pizza if you try hard and believe in yourself. I agree. Yeah. That's what. I'm but yeah, we need to do more hiking. Is what I'm getting at. <laughs> yeah, we've fallen down on that a little bit. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I was saying Durango had uh, amazing trails and city hiking, like mm-hmm. city walks, but also great food. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Yeah, Durango is one of my favorite places that we've yeah. been so far. So it's a place like if I had to settle down, like there's design work there and it's cool and I can escape to the desert and go live for the winter time. We say the same thing. We love it. And Moab's and close. Moab. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, let's answer yeah. some of these questions. Let's get to um, Bob's before we. We're getting close to our hour mark. It's going to be a long show. But Bob, who actually is in our course, um, he has for either of us, if we've managed to entertain or meet up with our non-RVing friends while on the road, and how has it worked out weaving family and friends into our nomadic lives? Oh, (laughs) yeah. So let's, so family, definitely. Um, What about friends, though? Uh, So your friend, Mark. 
that's we right. met with. Yeah. He's a musician and he travels all around and is touring a lot. And he lives in California a lot. So um, we get to catch up with him randomly. He's the main friend. Yeah. Um, but family is more so like family that lives on the West Coast that we never got to see, didn't have much of a relationship with yeah. because they were so far away. We have now started new traditions with. So yeah. um, our cousins in California, we spend Thanksgiving with uh, the, all, the whole years. time yeah. we've been on the road. And it's been so cool to like start this new tradition and they just kind of welcomed us in and it's been a lot of fun and it gives us new opportunities to develop these relationships with these people that we didn't get to see that often that's awesome that you get to like have that new tradition yeah. and i mean i could say the similar thing with uh family being on the west coast that uh, we got to visit some of my uh second cousins and well and even my mom's cousins over there they all live out like in around vancouver and some of them had lived near us when I was growing up, but they moved out there and I hadn't seen them since. So we all got, even my mom flew out and then she met us there and got to see her cousins there. Yeah. And so that was kind of, that was fun. I think and, with friends, I mean, like we've said, none of us really had a ton of friends before we started this. Well, we have more RV friends, but. And we've met a lot of my friends. We've lot met of a my, lot of her friends and yeah. we tend to. It's not so much that they come to us, but we go to them. Yeah, because I had a lot of my friends from growing up dispersed all around the country. So for us, we've been able to go see them, which has been kind of cool mm -hmm. because I haven't, you know, it's hard. It'd be like if someone was flying into New York when we're there, I met up with them, but they live in New Mexico. So I wasn't seeing them or maybe we'd happen to be back home visiting Indiana at the same time. Yeah. But other than that, it was like harder. So we've gone through and made like a loop to go visit all of my yeah. friends and then all of our family too. And the good thing for us is um, we've, we don't, we've never lived around our families um, after we left. Is that the good thing? <laughs> well, no, that's Just not kidding. the good thing. <laughs> but we, we've never lived around our families yeah. since we left for college. And yeah. so we have been able to make extended visits with them. Yeah. So, so for, for example, we said we were in Savannah and we, we stayed like, we stayed six weeks when we first went down there, but that was really nice because we got to um, hang out with his brother and his wife and our, I guess just niece at the time. Yep. <laughs> we have a nephew now there, but she like knows us because we were there for extended time that we we're part of our family. You know, we weren't just flying in for two days at yeah. Christmas or something like that. And then I guess meeting on the road, like your mom will come out and meet us and, and basically just set a general time frame, And we'll say, well, we're in this general area. Where do you want to go? Yeah. Um, when your brother and, and sister-in-law, yeah. they were going to, they were actually going to come watch our RV for us while we went off on a trip. And so we said, well, we'll be anywhere along this route. Where do you want us to leave the RV for you? <laughs> and they, they, they wanted us to put it near Houston where she grew up. So we found a spot there. So it, it works out. It takes a little more planning if you're going to meet on the road. Um, but it's not that hard. It's, you know, our, my parents are coming cross country this year. So yeah. trying to figure out if they're going the North route or the South route mm -hmm. and then whichever way they'll yeah. go, we'll, we'll hit them on the trail one of those ways. You know, it's been, it's been good for us to actually visit because we've had, um, we even got to see my cousin who was out at school in Colorado mm -hmm. and then he came and stayed with us in the RV to go visit Rocky Mountain <laughs> National yeah. Park. So we've had a lot of that. It's been worked out well. Yeah, it's a great excuse to take a vacation and make a plan and a whole event out of it. So I'm sure like our family, we've made multiple, come up with multiple ideas and plans to do. So it's like, whenever they want to take a vacation, we're like, you just tell us where we'll meet you there. Or we'll come up with a plan and make this fun family adventure out of it. Yeah. We'll, we'll even do like um, campgrounds that have cabins on site. So, you know, family can stay there or, you know, we'll pick a city that's got a hotel nearby. Cause some of our family likes hotels. And, yeah. As Roger said he likes this comparing notes <laughs> and can learn twice as much yeah. this way. <laughs> yeah, both both uh, views, I guess. <laughs> and Gary's got another pizza place for me. Yeah, okay. Gary has another pizza place. He's like, and it's not our being, but the best pizza is Rosie's in Penn Station. 
we lived up there for like five years and i don't think we ever went there no, i tried <laughs> I to avoid say. penn station as much as yeah. possible though <laughs> oh i can hide that um Oh, that's okay, weird. Yeah, that guy's I got, got the really same confused. last name as me. Well, Michael B. Hatcher. Name, um, my name is Brandon yeah. Michael Hatcher. Yeah. Um, we went into that just a yeah, couple minutes I, ago. Yeah, like if you're talking about Kyle and Livia, when you, got, uh, when you watch the replay, uh, you can fast forward to that. That question was discussed in there. They're, mainly you guys do around your social media bubble now and your music and all of that. Uh, unless he's talking to us, and then with us, we have different things. So. Yeah, we, we have our own various hustles. One of them is our course that we sell to help people learn to live on the road. It's called Roadmap to Full-Time RVing. I yeah. just say shameless plug. <laughs> um, we also write for magazines and do some speaking agreement engagements for um, RVing. And we've got some other stuff we're working on. And Krenza does and, social media management for different mm -hmm. companies, primarily RV companies. Yeah. And sometimes I draw maps of hospitals <laughs> for another company. <laughs> And I get paid doing that. It's all kinds of weird For stuff. a few years, mainly that what sustained us on the road is we had a contract doing what we did before we left to go. We RV. designed watches. Yeah. Oh, I was like, what are you pointing at? Yeah, we don't wear yeah, watches. But... We designed watches for a long time. And that's what we did. And yeah, that's like how we made 17 money. years. That's so cool. <laughs> That was, but it's it's very strange. He's Michael B. Hatcher, and yeah, you're... I'm Brandon Michael Hatcher. Yeah, so, so, to the like, we got confused looking at your name for a yeah. second. Threw us off there. Your name. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Michael. What's your middle name? It's not Brandon, is it? <laughs> that would be. <laughs> no, there was a question there about Alabama. Oh, yeah, from Kathy. Kathy. Yeah. Do you have a park in um? Alabama or Louisiana area that you particularly like? So we get this question quite often and we have so little knowledge about it because we're usually mooch docking. Yeah, but staying with family. Uh, can attest to Gulf State Park in Orange Beach or Gulf Shores. Yep. It is a beautiful park located right near the beaches. Uh, State Park. Walking distance yeah. from the beach. And then Bayou Sinet in um, Louisiana is a state park. Yeah. And it is a really nice, well-maintained park. They have free laundry there. It's the only place I've ever mm. seen free laundry before. Um, and it's a pretty good um, One machine. proximity mm. to town. Now, apparently, um, Louisiana State Parks have free laundry in, in the state parks. Yeah. But that's what you always hear about that one. Yeah. It's like the free laundry. It's like, yeah, it's really nice. We've camped at so few state parks in mm. our two and a half years on the road. I don't know why. I think it's just we've always been able to find a more affordable option available mm -hmm. to us. Yeah. Whether that was through some discount membership we have or a boondocking spot nearby or something. Yeah, we tend to do a mix of boondocking and then state parks and county parks, like the smaller kinds of parks. And that was the reason we went from a 40 foot to a 30 foot because most parks will have space for a 40 footer, but they may only have three or four spaces. Whereas once you get down to 30, almost all the spaces we can squeeze into. Um, so that was our big motivation. And then we started, you know, really get going hard and boondocking. And then, you know, it's nice to be a little smaller for that too. I just want to say yay to Bob because, you know, they're going from Florida oh, yeah. to pick up their RV. And so they just made reservations at Redgate in Savannah, which is where we usually stay because it's really close. To yeah. town and family. Yeah, everything. Redgate's nice. We like that spot. So, yeah, park you're a lot. gonna pick up your RV, and they got some reservations there. <laughs> they're they're about to yeah pick it up, and they'll hit the road soon. So it's exciting. That's such an exciting experience. Well, it looks like I, we have a a nice show tonight. So thank you guys for joining us because that was you guys were a big part of that. Yeah. <laughs> so thanks for that. So having us we had fun talking to you guys we yeah. always do and make sure if you're not part of the vibe tribe yet to hop over to driving and vibe and give us a like or a thumbs up is it on facebook or yeah wherever anywhere where, wherever they would prefer to consume their experience. Driving, I, think. I didn't spell it right hold no, on no he's putting g's on it there's a g you have a g oh, on okay. driving no. <laughs> no. yeah is it driving vibin.com or can you do the and in there so yeah. you can write the and, or you can just do drive and vibing. Yep. Okay. Is that good? Cool. Perfect. Yes. There we go. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Check them out and drive and vibing. And of course you 
seen them on YouTube, so you can watch them there. They're everywhere. And yeah, we're glad to catch up with you guys because it was nice seeing you again at Quartzsite because it had been a while. Yeah, it, it has been. Been. I mean, we got we, to we, hang out again. We were such noobs when we first met. I know. <laughs> we are completely different people at this point, but hopefully a better version of ourselves. And hopefully when you guys visit Georgia next time, we could catch up. Yeah, yeah, we will for sure. And yeah, you guys, when we first met, you got thrown right into it because we were already like, everybody was kind of two weeks into this New Year's party that was just, and you got thrown into the end of it. So that was a weird time. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, I still remember you at the margarita table at Escapers. Um, but we'll save that story. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Kyle, Jenny just wanted to say she thought it'd be fun if you signed off every live show with a few chords on the guitar. So for future note Sorry. for your show. <laughs> if I had it here with me, I would play a couple for you, but. Nice. <laughs> All right. And we wanted to let you guys know if you're watching that oh, we do weird. have, yeah, there's some new thing on this program that you can do. We're trying it out. Um, RV, wow, that's a lot of words. RV to Freedom Live is every Monday. So we'll be back next Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And you can join the, oh, it, it, oh okay. Sorry. Join our community at rvtofreedomgroup.com. It's a Facebook group. So if you look for RV to Freedom on Facebook here, you'll find it. Yeah. And thank you guys so much for joining us. We can't wait to see what happens with the Argosy and like all the stuff going on and all yeah, the changes. I, I don't know if I want to do the work, <laughs> but I love watching people do the work because I do like to do that kinds of stuff. I just don't know if I would ever finish. Like I would do parts of it and then just get bored. Um, but some other friends of ours are doing an airstream and I watched them like doing all the drawers and stuff. I'm like, Oh man, I want to build that. You know? Yeah. Not getting back on the road is our motivation, keeping us driven. We have to finish the project if we want to get back. You're, off there and you're just going to have an empty shell with like an air <laughs> mattress in it and a bean yeah. bag and exactly. a hot plate. Totally spacious. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys for having us tonight. Uh, yes. We really enjoyed coming on and doing these live chats. They're always fun to interact with you guys and the community on here. Yep. And next time we see you, hopefully we can invite you into our newly renovated Argosy and have you over for tea or coffee or something. Yeah. Maybe yeah. we'll do another live stream from inside that the Argosy. Cool. cool. Yeah. yeah. Nice. All right, guys. Well, thanks everyone for hanging out. Um, no, we got a lot of things. A lot of people are happy you guys are yeah. here and thanking you for your thanks to all of us, all of you for what you do. Thank you everyone for showing up tonight with us. It's been awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so it's been great. So thank you so much. You guys take care. I know you have uh, your videos every day. So mm -hmm. if you guys want more of them, jump on the channels. Yeah. <laughs> You'll see them all the time. And we'll talk to you later. Bye, right, bye guys. Right Hi. Well, that didn't work. Okay, guys. Bye, guys. See you later. One more time. Bye. We hope you enjoyed this replay of our Facebook live show. Join our Facebook community to participate in the live shows and learn how to live in an RV. Go to rvtofreedomgroup.com to join the RV to Freedom Facebook group. And to be notified about our next live videos and more, sign up with the link provided below in the video description. We want to help you find your RV to freedom.